the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik dear friends welcome to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the previous episode we heard of the great dilemma faced by king dhritarashtra when he discovered that his nephews the pandavas were not only alive but also married the daughter of the powerful king drupad of panchal now let's listen what decision he takes and how that shapes the future of the pandavas two days after the arrival of the pandavas and after they had some good rest dhritarashtra summoned them to the royal assembly the five brothers dressed in white silk took their seats in the hall krishna and balarama were invited to sit on the golden thrones just next to the king bhishma drona kripa and vidura sat in their respective seats Duryodhana and his brothers also graced the hall and sat just opposite to the Pandavas. The entire hall was buzzing with anticipation. After everybody had settled down, Dhritarashtra stood up. Words cannot express the joy I feel to have the sons of my dear brother Pandu back with us again. I feel blessed, said Dhritarashtra. but we must ensure that peace prevails in the family we must ensure that the kuru kingdom does not become the cause for any conflict between the pandavas and the kauravas hence i have decided to divide the kingdom between the brothers in equal parts he looked at yudhishthira and said dear yudhishthir i give you the vast land of kandava go there establish your kingdom and live in peace the entire assembly hall was stunned to hear this bhishma drona and vidura looked at each other the king has followed their suggestion and gave half the kingdom to the pandavas but kandava it was a piece of barren land with deserts marshes and forests no human being can live there Duryodhana and Dushashana were quite happy though sending the Pandavas to Kandava was nothing more than banishing them from civilization Bhima was mad with rage Kandava he gives us that god for second piece of land as our kingdom he whispered in Yudhishthira's ears Yudhishthira stopped him from saying any more for he had noticed Krishna's smile and nod in agreement when Dhritarashtra made his announcement besides yudhishthira would agree to any proposal that ensures peace he stood up with folded palms and said o king we are grateful for your kind gesture and accept your offer with all humility tomorrow at daybreak we will leave for kandava that afternoon dhritarashtra crowned yudhishthira as the king of kandava Rishi Vyasa himself arrived to perform the rituals. The next morning the Pandavas departed for Kandava. Krishna also accompanied them and so did Vyasa. When they reached Kandava the brothers felt quite disheartened to see the vast barren land with no human being in sight. Krishna smiled and asked Vyasa, "O oh, Rishi, please find us an auspicious location where my dear friends can build their city." Vyasa looked around and selected a place. Krishna then summoned Indra, the king of the gods. Soon Indra appeared in front of Krishna. Krishna asked him, "Lord, please bless this land and make it rich and fertile. Then build a great city for the Pandavas." Indra summoned the celestial architect and engineer Vishwakarma and entrusted him with the job. 
in no time vishwakarma constructed a fabulous city full of huge mansions wide roads and beautiful parks lakes and canals were built to make the land rich and fertile since the city was built by indra it was named indraprastha vishwakarma built a huge and beautiful palace for the pandavas with marble and precious stones it was gorgeous as the house of the gods in heaven if not better the pandavas moved into the palace and began their royal duty as the rulers of indraprastha the pandavas made sure that their subjects had the best quality of life and had nothing to complain about soon people from all around began to move into the new city of indraprastha under the able rule of yudhishthira and his brothers they hoped to live a peaceful and prosperous life in their new homeland one day the revered celestial sage rishi narada visited indraprastha to meet the pandavas the pandava brothers greeted him with due respect yudhishthira offered the rishi his own grand throne to sit draupadi cooked several delicious dishes and served him with her own hands draupadi's enchanting beauty caught the attention of the great rishi he also noticed how enamored were her five husbands with their common wife after draupadi left narada called the five brothers and said boys let me tell you a story in the olden days there lived two powerful demon brothers named sunda and upasunda just like you their fraternal bond was so strong that they were almost inseparable they did everything together and whatever they earned they always shared between themselves they wanted to conquer the heavens and the earth to ensure their success they began a long and arduous worship of lord brahma to ask for a boon of immortality lord brahma was pleased with their worship but he said you want to conquer the heavens for that i cannot make you immortal ask something else the demon brother said then give us the boon that nobody or nothing in the universe would be able to kill us we could only die in the hands of each other brahma agreed powered by the boon which made them almost indestructible sunda and upasunda began their rampage they destroyed and looted kingdoms villages and whatever came on their path as they marched towards the heavens the gods were scared they went to lord brahma and asked for a solution to the problem he had created brahma called upon vishwakarma the celestial craftsman brahma told him build a woman so beautiful and attractive that nobody would be able to resist her vishwakarma then went out and collected bit by bit the best things available from all over the universe and built a gorgeous woman her name was tilottama she was so pretty that when she walked around lord brahma he couldn't stop looking at her and a face popped out on each of the four sides of his head hence he is also called chaturanan or the four headed brahma indra too grew a thousand eyes to enjoy her beauty brahma told tilottama go and seduce sunda and upasunda with your beauty sunda and upasunda were enjoying themselves in the foothills of the bindhya mountains when tilottama appeared between them the drunk brothers were awestruck by her incredible beauty sunda held her right arm and pulled her to his side upasunda jumped in and grabbed her left arm and pulled her to his side they started a tug of war with tilottama between them sunda said brother you let go of her i want to marry her she is like your sister in law treat her with respect upasunda growled no she is my queen you let go of her soon a fight broke out between them they pounced upon each other with their mace and soon they lay dead each killed by the other narada stopped 
and looked at the Pandava brothers. He said, You have also married one of the most beautiful maidens on earth. You must ensure that she does not become the cause for your mutual destruction, just like Sunda and Upasunda. I suggest you come up with a rule such that no conflict can arise regarding the companionship of Draupadi. After Narada left, Yudhishthira thought about his suggestion. He then consulted his brothers and came up with a plan. They decided that Draupadi would live with each brother for a period of one year. During this period, if any of the other brothers entered the couple's room and saw them together, he would have to leave the palace and go into exile for a period of 12 years. And during these 12 years, he will have to stay celibate. With this arrangement in place, the Pandavas made sure that Draupadi would never be the cause for any disagreement between the brothers. One evening, a group of Brahmins came to the palace and complained to Arjuna that a group of bandits have been stealing their cattle. The Brahmins said, Arjuna, we pay you, the rulers of Khandava, a share of our crops as taxes. Hence it is your duty to protect your citizens in distress. You should go right away and catch these bandits and get our cattle back. Arjuna assured them, don't worry, I'll get your cattle back. Arjuna went in to get his weapons, but he realized that his weapons were in a room where Yudhishthira was spending his time with Draupadi. Arjuna was in a fix. If he went into the room to get his weapons, he would have to go into exile for 12 years. But if he didn't, Yudhishthira would have to suffer the consequences for not serving his duty as the ruler of Khandava. Finally, he thought he can never turn his brother down. He'd rather go into exile than let Yudhishthira fall from grace. He barged into the room and asked Yudhishthira his permission to take his weapons. Yudhishthira was surprised, but he didn't object. Arjuna went out with his weapons and in no time he captured the bandits and returned the cattle to the Brahmins. The Brahmins praised Arjuna for his prompt action and praised Yudhishthira for being a great ruler. Arjuna then came back to the palace and went to meet Yudhishthira. He kneeled down in front of Yudhishthira and said, Brother, I broke the rule. I should be punished. I will live for my exile right now. Please, permit me. Yudhishthira was overwhelmed with emotion. Arjuna, you have done nothing wrong, he said. A younger brother can always enter his elder brother's room. Besides, I wasn't unhappy to see you. And whatever you did, you did it for my benefit. You should not have to go into exile. Arjuna said, Brother, I learned from you that a rule is a rule and breaking it under any circumstances is against virtue. I must have my punishment. With tearful eyes, the Pandava brothers said goodbye to Arjuna as he left the palace. Draupadi stood at the doorway and watched Arjuna as he vanished into the horizon. Her eyes filled with tears while her heart pained at the thought of Arjuna's indifferent attitude towards her. Arjuna wandered through many countries until he reached the source of the river Ganges. There he wished to take a dip in the holy waters and pray for his deceased ancestors. As he stepped into the water, something caught his feet and dragged him down the river. It was Ulupi, the princess of the Nagas or celestial serpents. When Arjuna woke up, he found himself lying in a bed in a beautiful palace with a gorgeous maiden. He asked, who are you? And, and where am I? The woman smiled and said, I am Ulupi, daughter of Kauravya, the king of the Nagas. You are in my palace. Arjuna was surprised. He asked, but, but why did you bring me here? Ulupi smiled and said, Pardon me, my prince. When I saw you by the riverside, I was overcome with love and desire. 
I couldn't resist myself. I brought you here. Please accept me and please my desire. Arjuna got up from the bed. I am sorry, Ulupi. I cannot do that. Ulupi was hurt. She moved close to Arjuna and said, But why? Don't you find me attractive? Am I not pretty enough? Arjuna looked at her and said, You are beautiful, Ulupi. Any man would die to be your lover. But I have made a vow to stay celibate for twelve years of my exile. I cannot break my promise. He then explained to Ulupi the cause for his exile. Ulupi said, But your vow of celibacy only applies to Draupadi, since she was the cause for your exile. Hence, that should not prevent you from being my lover. Let me tell you, if you do not please me, I will destroy myself and you will be responsible for my death. As a Kshatriya warrior, it is your duty to save a damsel in distress. So help me. Please. Her argument convinced Arjuna. Besides, Ulupi was too attractive to be ignored. He smiled and pulled Ulupi into his strong arms. Later, the satisfied Naga princess kissed Arjuna and said, My prince, you have fulfilled my desire and saved my life. I give you this boon. You will be invincible in water. No amphibious creature would be able to conquer you. After taking his leave from Ulupi, Arjuna continued his journey towards the east. On his way, he visited many holy places and pilgrimages. He spent some time in the Mahendra mountains and then proceeded along the eastern seashores until he reached the kingdom of Manipura. While strolling through the charming parks and the gardens of the city, he saw a gorgeous woman riding a horse pass by. The woman was in men's clothes and armour. But still, her radiant beauty didn't go unnoticed by Arjuna. He asked a passerby, Who is this lovely maiden? The man smiled and said, Oh, that is Chitrangada, the daughter of our king Chitrabahana. Arjuna walked away. But he couldn't get the image of Chitrangada off his mind. Her poise, her strength and her masculine demeanor was strangely attractive. Arjuna knew that he is in love and Chitrangada was his destiny. The next morning, he walked into the palace and bowed in front of King Chitrabahana. O king, I am Arjuna, son of the great Kuru king Pandu. I am in love with your daughter Chitrangada and I would like to request her hand in marriage. The king said, Arjuna, I am honoured by your proposal, but there is a complication. Many moons ago, one of my ancestors named Prabhanjana worshipped Lord Shiva and prayed for a son. The satisfied Lord gave him a boon which ensured each of his generation would have but only one child. Each of my ancestors had a son. But I was blessed with a daughter, Chitrangada. So I brought her up like a son. If you can promise that her son would be my descendant and continue my lineage, only then you can marry my daughter. Arjuna was so enamoured with the princess that he was in no condition to think. I promise, O King Chitravahana, I promise, Chitrangada's son will be the descendant of your line and will be the ruler of Manipura. I will have no claim on him. King Chitravahana was delighted to hear this and arranged for the marriage ceremony of his daughter Chitrangada with Arjuna. In due course, Chitrangada gave birth to a son and named him Babrubahana. After three years in Manipura, Arjuna said goodbye to Chitrangada and continued his journey through the plains of India.
The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed, and told by Shudipta Balmik. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any podcast catcher.